Okay, so, Cult of Lamb gives you hearts, depending on the difficulty you play. Obviously, the harder the difficulty, the less health you get. But, what if you do those hearts out the window, and just took no damage? Because today, we'll be finding out, can you beat Cult of Lamb without taking damage? Also, as proof that I'm not faking this, after every crusade, I show the screen, which just shows a 50% bonus for not taking damage. Okay, so to start this off, I'm gonna run straight into Darkwood. Luckily, since I'm playing in easy mode, most of the monsters are one-shot. So, right now, it's not really a strategy I'm playing with, but to handle the monsters that aren't one-shot, I'll need to up my damage. So, anytime I find a tarot card dealer, I'll be taking damage cards. Since the HP won't really help, you know, cause no damage. See, that look how kind of damage I do. That one's driving my paws of fury. But, after clearing the path over the bodies, I'll come across this room, where I meet. Pretty easy fight, I just smack them four times, then dodge away. Yeah, that's pretty much it. They're nowhere near my level. Then I'll accept them into my cult, so I can get out of here. Oh look, in the corner. Damage thing. Now once I'm back, I'm gonna just breeze through this tutorial stuff. Nothing of value really lost, until I'm able to start another crusade into Darkwood. This time around, I'm gonna be going around collecting grass for later. I get it by just attacking the tall grass, but I can't any yet, or I'll puke. On top of that, I need a hefty amount of coins to pull this off, so since I'm not getting any damage cards, I'll choose the rabbit's foot card, which just increases my chance of getting more coins. Pretty convenient. And finally, I'll need some people to share my profits with, so anytime I see a follower, I'll be following the path to pick them up. Oh, I forgot this overgrown bird was here. I'm just gonna take these. But besides that distraction, here's a tougher one. They start by jumping around, so I'm just gonna avoid them. And when they stop being a spaz, I go in for some smacks. Dodging towards them when they shoot the ring to get more smacks in. Also, if you're scared of being hit, you can use curses. But that's not why I'm using them. Break the school's ankles, then give them the quick one too. Light work. Now that I'm back, I have some business with the temple. Do some stupid tutorial stuff, then I'll preach a sermon. Lock in weapon upgrade. I'll be getting main weapons, since the poison helps deal with tougher enemies and bosses. So with my poisonous weapons, I'm gonna walk my butt back into Darkwood. And like a stupid dog, I need to collect some bones. Obviously, for more annoying tutorial stuff. I just need to smack some body bags and skeletons to get them. Oh, and I also ran into this gambling tree. Big money, big money! Yes! Swim me some easy fish. Wait a minute. If I beat the boss... I'll get 50% more fish. Excellent. So now, to beat. They had like a little rat, so now I just need to play a little game of Whack-A-Mole. Except for the mole is covered in deadly spikes. Luckily, they're only shooting projectiles, so I was able to just beat the stuffing out of them. <laughs> let's go. And to celebrate the successful crusade, I'll throw a bonfire party for my followers. Okay, now that the tutorial stuff is out of the way, I can finally start building up my cold. I'll do this by accepting the rest of my followers, and making them superior animals, then placing beds for each one, since they get snappy if you don't. I build them all up, then make my way to the temple to set a doctrine. So I want to get sustenance one for the ritual feast, just a little stepping stone for now. Then after, I'll perform a little sermon to level my weapons. Wow, how lucky. I guess I'll just wait another day for a second sermon. I'll pass down by getting cool upgrades and blessing my cats to level them up. And I guess while I'm at it, I'll set another doctrine to level them up for the sermon. <sighs> I mean, it's sermon time. This should have happened last time, but I guess better late than ever. Unlock this, since it gives me better starting weapons. And sweet! Like four of them leveled up. I need to talk to them to get a complete commandment stone, then I'll use it instantly to set another doctrine. Again, going for sustenance, unlocking the second version, and getting me the grass eater trait. Now, this just removes all the pesticides from the grass I collected earlier, so now it's all fit to munch on. See? Look how much they're loving it. We're so good they leveled up, and thanks to that devotion, I can upgrade my cult. Now that I have cult 2, I need to get the shelter, 
the tabernacle, and then finally the offering statue, which will all be used for later. But for now, it's dungeon time. So, along the way, I'm going to try to take the path with the least resistance, aka, no fights. Also, I ran into Hellob, he's just a merchant that sells delicious goods. Wait, what? Let's just, uh, rescue this poor thing from this crazed cannibal. In addition to beating Hellob, I met the fisherman along the way. I'll just have a little chat with him, so he marks the Pilgrim Passage on my map. And now, it's time for some action. I'll just mosey my way into the ritual, and watch from a safe distance, waiting for him to transform into... I'll run in and get as much damage as possible, since he's stuck in a summoning phase, and I need to deal with these lackeys, since he's on the ground. Luckily, I have this protection curse, which makes me invincible for 2 seconds, allowing me to get some free hits in. And now, since he's half health, he's gonna try to summon more enemies. Translation, free damage. Sucks that I ran out of fervor, so no more invincibility curses. But, he's already low in health, so just a few more hits, and... Now that was a close call. <laughs> this bug's almost got me! We'll just borrow this, and then I'm out of here. And as usual, their butt was kicked without taking any damage. So, I had to get back to my cats, so we could celebrate. Okay, that close call with Fleshy was kind of scary. I would increase my defense, but not really much to defend when you can't take damage. Hmm, I guess they do say the best defense is a good offense, so then it's time to get my damage up. I'll start off in the temple by setting a doctrine and sustenance again to unlock its third version. With this, I get the ritual of Ocean's Bounty. Uh, the amount of fish I'll get from this. Uh, I mean, this is for better gear. Yeah, better gar. Perform the ritual, which just raises my chances to fish up bigger catches, and also to free tuna. I'll head on over here so I can travel the Pilgrim Passage. Hello, Mr. Fisherman, your finest police. What do you mean I have to do it myself? Would you call me? Oh, the card. Great. Anyways, after that, I ran this card. I'll start fishing. Once I catch enough, and there are only just a few fish left, I'll travel back to my cult, just going around to bust the cats and unlock random things. When it's available, I need to set doctrines, going for possessions one and getting the bar follower action. <laughs> you know, you could only wonder what this action does. Then later on I'll be getting possessions too, for the belief in materialism trade. This is where the shelters come in handy, since when a sleeping bag breaks, it's easier to just replace them with an upgrade. Plus, the materialism trait makes the followers happy, the comfier the beds are. I've been fishing in between these tasks, just getting as much as possible, but now it's dark out. Perfect. I need to go to the end of this bridge, which is where I'll be meeting Fox. He asks me for some fish, which he'll be getting the smallest one I have. He didn't fish for it, this is all he gets. But from that, I get a talisman fragment. And after, I'll talk to the fishermen and get the remaining three. Which gets me a full, holy talisman. Now over in the temple, I can trade this in for the golden fleece, which gives me a damage bonus for every enemy I kill. And as a plus, I heard it's made of 24 karat gold. But anyways, eventually, the ocean spouty timer will wear off. Before leaving, I need to make my way over to the lighthouse, talk to this nut job, so they ask for some wood. Put 15 logs into the fireplace, and light it up. Oh wow, you're so thankful they made me a little statue. Oh, and he gives devotion too. But now since the lighthouse is lit, all the pilgrims moved outside. And this guy over here sells some goods I need, which would be the all Seeing Sun card, card that gives me a damage increase during the day. Okay, so now, after all that setup, I'm ready to challenge Nura. And as you can see, for every enemy I kill, I get a 5% damage bonus, which just makes it that easier to kick these guys' butts. It's also helpful when I need bosses, like... This guy's pretty annoying, because he's always jumping around, but when he's not, I can just easily wreck him by just stepping a small distance away, and then attacking. BAM! And since I kicked his butt so well, I get rewarded with the offering chest. <laughs> now it's for the worst part, selling the fish. I need the money, man, but this still isn't a fair trade. <sighs> it has to be done. Well, at least I was able to keep some. So now, I need to go back to the temple to set up a doctorate. I'll unlock positions three and get the alms report ritual, 
using the fish money, I can distribute it out to my followers to increase their loyalty. Fish would have been better. But they still liked it. Also, an FYI, high loyalty helps me gain more points during sermons, one extra point for every level a follower has, aka better weapons, faster. And now, back into Anura. Along the way I met these three twats, talking about bowing down. <laughs> what am I, some sort of... So, nine hours later, I finally ran into... Get some crazy damage in while they're just standing still. Then I'm gonna just run away. Those bugs hurt, but they have a lifespan of like four seconds. So yeah, now they're dead. And I'm just gonna finish them off with some fireballs. Now back at the cult. What? What do you want? What the? Who told them I sold the fish? Well, if they're mad I kept all the money, then all I need to do is get some back. Great. It's on cooldown. Well, at least there's something I can unlock to make the cooldown faster. Now just get ritual cooldown. Wait, what? Cheaper rituals? Ugh. Well, I guess the cheaper rituals is fine for now. Well, I guess on the bright side, with the sermon, I could get better weapons. <sighs> guess I'll just go back into the dungeon. Take my rage on this stupid 3 a frog. Stupid followers, it's my money! Ah. I should do this more often. Okay, back some to around the second boss, I found this lot. I don't know why, but they keep rambling on about not hurting them. But at least talking to them, I get access to a new location. Spore Grotto. Okay, no more flashbacks. So I need to travel on over to Spore Grotto, where I'll meet this mushroom vendor. By this weeping moon card, it's pretty much the opposite of that sun one. It gives me a damage bonus, but at night time. Now, for the final crusade into a Nura. Funnily enough, I got the card I just bought, but that's not the important part. After selecting a card, I want to go over here and buy this. Pretty much, buy an extra card. Nice. More damage cards. And I can keep doing this with every card dealer. Just gotta wait out this cooldown. Wow, I'm lucky. Two defense cards. Now it's time to fight the overgrown frog. Instantly dodge, since he's trying to freaking crush me, get in some damage, then I just need to stall out these attacks. And after hearing the crit noise, time to deal some insane damage. Anyways, as a last ditch effort, she tries to summon lackeys, but it's ready to wait for her. Adding a second heart to my collection. And on to the next one. Okay, so before going into this boss room, I need to get this. What the? Oh, great, it's this idiot. What the heck? What's he doing with Hyun? You just fart on him? Oh, no, he just made him sick. Great. So before stepping foot in that disease-ridden place, I need to get some devotion so I can unlock some things. So now I need to get the healing bay, and then farming station 2. And over in this corner, I'm going to set up a little farm. Placing a farming station as the base, and surrounding it with farm plots. I only added too much, just refund them since I need this grass for food. Now after changing the layout, I'll add a seed silo and a scarecrow to get rid of those pesky birds. Then build it all up and BAM! Now we need to get some camilla seeds, which are over here. This worm guy sells some. I need a ton, so clicking time. I bought too much. So I'll fill the seed bin with them so my followers can plant them when I'm not around. But for now, I'll plant some seeds myself. See? Now that's a farm. Now all I need is this healing bay, place one down, here. Didn't that solve that cat bit 19 problem for later? So now, it's dungeon time. More like boss time, since I'm just fighting. Luckily, I got the best curse ever, and just whipped their butt in two seconds. Yeah, that was pathetic. So now, I need your wise guy over here, who decided to eat random fish he found in the cave. So, over to the healing bay, where, with the camilla flowers, I can heal them. Don't want them spreading any diseases. Now, back to Anchor Deep. Thankfully, I put a stop to that cat flu, so now no more. <sighs> Five? Oh my gosh. This damn fish, man. I'll deal with this later. Because now, I need to fight. This one's annoying as hell, since they just shoot projectiles and summon a butt ton of enemies. 
But to count on this, I just wait for an opening, and then get some smacks in. Also, hitting these exploded guys into them is kind of fun, and it deals damage. Just need a few more... Get out of here. Freaking idiot. Ugh. Time for the bigger problem. Five sick kitties. Oh, and this dead one. Don't mind me. This is quite a dire situation, and I don't have enough Kamala flowers. So, over the temple, I need to set a doctorate, choosing work and worship one, and getting the industrious trade. Now, my followers work harder, which means faster Kamala flower collection. Now, over in the healing bay, it's miracle time, baby. Heal all five of these silly cats, giving flowers to each and every one of them, thus finally putting an end to this cat fit 19 scare. Remember kids, don't eat fish from caves. Okay, now that all the cats are healthy and happy, I just need to collect their devotion, where I can now finally unlock ritual cooldowns. Over the temple, I just need to go to rituals and then... Then do alms at a board. Pay off the cats to up their loyalty, so that when I perform my next sermon, I can get some better weapons. And now that that's done, time to finish off the rest of Anchor Deep. So for the third boss... I had a hammer with a fat damage multiplier, so instantly have their health. Then just finish it off with some calamari curses. <laughs> and finishing that gives me access to the main course. Like usual, watch and wait for them to power up until he transforms into. And so you run in to get some easy damage. Since he's stuck summoning lackeys, and once they spawn in, I just distance myself from them and use curses to keep building up some damage. Smack the life out of this freaking lackey, and then cook them to completion with some fire. Haha, <laughs> squids on the menu tonight, boys. Okay, so after that delicious hearty meal, time to challenge the last area, so cradle. But before that, foresight powers. Along the way, I'll be meeting this thing, they summon my followers, and just expose my fish slings scanners with them. Now with that knowledge, my follower becomes some savage animal and tries to kill me. But luckily, since they suck, they can't really hit me. Uh, so to keep that from happening, my secret's safe, and I guess a stupid follower too. In the temple, using a heart, I'll get this omnipresent skill, which just basically lets me run away in the middle of a crusade. Obviously, this is pretty useful, since the only other way of leaving is dying, and the last time I checked, I had to be hit to die, which I can't do. But enough of that. When they summon in a follower, I just need to make some distance. I can hit them, but not too much. I guess I hit them so hard they lost their memory on how to walk. Uh, I guess I'll just... And omnipresent skill for the win. Successfully getting me out of there. Now on the next crusade in Silk Cradle, I won't have to worry about hurting any followers. Well, at least not mine. And then finish this off, I'll fight. I ran for some easy damage, and it's attacking me by like a mile. So I just shoot some cursors at them. Uh, where'd they go? What the frick? <laughs> oh my! <laughs> That's what you get for trying to sneak attack me. Should have known it's impossible to sneak up on cats. <laughs> okay, now since I only have 19 followers, obviously because I wasn't collecting enough and not for video purposes, I need to get a few more followers. So, over and up to the right, this hell up. And he sells followers. Oh, great. A dog. Well, I guess I could change them later, so I'll just buy them off him for now. Yeah, get them away from this cannibalistic creep. And back over here, I'll give them their much-needed makeover. Bam. Looking as good as new. This is just for later, so I can unlock the final boss. It's just easier to do now than later on. But now that the mod made up problems fixed, back to the crusades. Along the way, I meet them again. They just asked me to bow down, but I ain't no pushover. Just gotta fight a few stupid bugs. And technically speaking, it is better to not bow, since you have to fight no matter what. So, might as well keep your dignity. And get out of here. Then, eventually, I'll meet this abomination. I'll get in some hits while they're summoning lackeys. But don't anyway enough, they summon a butt ton. So I just need to deal with the lackeys that are around the boss, so I can get in close and deal some damage. Then I'll finish off with a little combo, and a nice wave. Then, in again, since I need to silence these rumors. Great. 
now there's two of them. Well, anyways, same trick. Throw them to one side, run over to the opposite side, and pray. Pray. Pray faster! Oh my gosh, they almost got me. And once again, no more having no followers, or rumors flying around about selling fish. Now, time for... Give them a real quick smack to the face. Then I use the curse to block their projectiles, smack them again, curse, then smack. Easy peasy. Uh, and I guess since there's still time I could fight them. Now that they're finally done charging up, it's time to fight. This is a pretty much just running simulator. They're fast moving your boss, so I'll get in hits here and there. And look, they're flying away. <laughs> oh, I'm almost cutting my head off. I just need to hit them, dodge, hit. One last hit. Oh my gosh. What the heck? These got blown the smithereens. Well, I guess I'll just grab this and take my leave. Okay, now it's time for the final act. Inside the gateway, I'll use my 20 followers to perform a ritual to ascend. Later, Ben. Now, I'm back in the afterlife. Oh nice, some complimentary weapons. Guess I'll take this one, and that one. And now, it's time. Yeah, no one cares. Oh my cats! Ugh. But now, it's time to end things off. Sacrificed. Hmm, last time that happened. Yeah, I think that kind of is taking damage. So, uh, no thanks. It's time to fight back. For this guy, I used to keep my distance. Don't really want to be poked by this guy with a lollipop spear, but eventually he'll stop, which is where I'll run in for a quick smack, then avoid stepping on the spiky chains. Once it's finished, I used to need to beat the stuffing out of him because it's free damage when they're summoning. Ah, first cat down. Now, like the other idiot, this guy protects himself from summoning, so I just need to run around, wearing these hoops, since after all that, he gets tired, aka butt whipping time. Then while he's shooting out chains, I can just circle him, getting in the damage I need to beat him. Now, for the one who's been waiting in the back. He constantly teleports, so he's kind of annoying. It also doesn't help that he uses long range attacks, so for now, I'll keep a safe distance until I get lucky and he teleports right next to me. Then I'll smack him up until he falls. Obviously, I was stuck. I'll beat him while he's down. What the frick? Why did I attack? Ugh. Anyways, the deed is done. Time to finish him off with a crowded shot. Wait, what? God damn it, I should have just dropped the stupid head off earlier. Well, I guess I just need to poke out his eyes. Just gonna run around and attack his eyes, while watching out for all these projectiles, until one of them pops. I'll get some fervor from the crying followers, while the eyes are on the ground, and then just dodge this. Then, back to poking the eyes out some more. Holy crap! I'm gonna get hit by that. Uh, I guess just to be safe, I'm gonna circle around here, get more revenge on that eyeball. Oh, uh, I guess I'll get on the other one. Gotta save the best for last. Then for this attack, I just need to run into this corner to avoid all the projectiles. And when it's done, I'll collect some more fervor, so now I can spam my curses. Get him! Kill him! Yes! There we go! Stupid eyeball thought I forgot about it. And now time to put this skin ball to rest. Hiya! What the heck? <laughs> Get a load of this guy. 
He's really asking to be spared. Yeah. No thanks. Die! Why the frick is he... Why the frick do I still hear him crying? He's haunting me from the afterlife! <laughs> I'll just ignore it, I guess. Because now, the challenge is finally done. I was able to beat the game without taking any damage. So, now time for one last celebration with the rest of the cats. So hard in here. I'm dying. Holy oh gosh. Oh man, I'm gonna pass out. Blech.